All right, so a couple months ago, I did a video on my top five favorite old world species, and it was rather popular, and we actually had a pretty good dialogue running in the comments section where folks kind of chipped in with what their favorite old world species were. Um, I had a really difficult time with that, and I have a really difficult time with lists in general, because generally speaking, if I'm keeping something, I love it, I don't like basically looking at what I've got and going, this is my favorite. I don't do it with my dogs. I don't do it with my children. Well, I don't do it with my children unless they're really annoying me. And then sometimes we do it as a joke. But for the most part, we don't do that around here. We love everybody equally, including all of our pets. So this is really tough to do. So for the last two months, I've had a list going that basically started with every single New World species I keep. And I tried to whittle it down from there. So it's been quite the endeavor. And uh, I think I finally got it to a point where I like it. So what we're going to do is go over my top 10. I'm going to give myself five extra this time. Uh, favorite beginner species that I keep. There might be a couple alternates in there or ones that just about made it but didn't make the cut. I know a couple of mine would not pose for the camera, so they got bumped off the list for the time being. But please understand this isn't set in stone and this is just my personal favorite. I'm not telling you these are the best. I want to make that very, very clear because I had a couple people that didn't seem to get the list last time that I wasn't telling everybody these are the best species. These are just the ones I prefer. So this is just a fun one. And again, I encourage people to come in, chime in in the comments section and let me know what your favorites are. Just because ours are different doesn't mean one is better than the other. So as long as we're clear, we're going to go ahead and and start the video. All right, coming in at number 10, Gramostola Iringi. You can see a still photograph here. In a moment, you'll see my girl just kind of sitting there and in action. Just a gorgeous Gramostola species. And unlike many of the other Gramostolas in that they are rather leggy, they don't plump out as much when they're ready to molt, which makes it difficult sometimes to recognize when they're in pre-molt. And it's one of the biggest Gramostola species, if not the biggest, with females supposedly tapping out at around 8 inches. This girl here is a solid six and a half, seven. As you can see, very, very calm. They do have a reputation for being a little more high strung. And part of that's due to the fact that they are leggy and can really move when disturbed. They can book. Those legs carry them very, very quickly. But one of the things I love about the species, besides the beautiful red abdomen and that bluish tinge it has to its body, is the feeding responses are amazing. I've had this one chase crickets and roaches right across the enclosure, almost with the same fervor as a Formictopus species. Uh, the growth rate is much faster than a lot of my grandma stolas. I've had this girl now for, I think, about two years, and she's molted four times in that time period, which is really impressive for a grandma stola species. So again, one of my favorites, and, and in any given day, she could be up around one through five, but just one that definitely needs to be on this list as one of my top 10 favorite New World species. Coming in at number nine, Bumba Cabocla, one of my favorites, just, just such a unique looking spider. As you can see in the still photo here, that pumpkin red carapace. Unfortunately, I was having a hard time getting this girl to come out for this video, so I couldn't get the super good shot of her. But you can see they're just so sleek with the velvety limbs and velvety hairs on their abdomens with that pumpkin orangey kind of carapace, just such a striking animal. And one of the few tarantulas I keep that if you took a small picture of them and didn't tell somebody they were a tarantula, they might think there was some type of exotic um, true spider just because of the shape of their legs. You can see their feet are very, very pointed and it gives them a very unique look. As slings, these guys are a little more tentative with the eating, but as they put on some size, they're stone cold killers as adults, and I love feeding this one. That's how I got this one out, was dropping some crickets in, and it went nuts trying to get them, and posed for some pictures for a little while. But just a cool species, and one I'd like to see show up in more collections. I know I've done a couple videos on them, and I've had some people go out and pick them up afterwards, and I'm glad, because they're one that I think sometimes gets overlooked. Also, you'll read that they only get to be about three inches. That's not true. Supposedly, these guys get to be a solid five to even six inches. Mine right now, this one right here, is one of the smaller ones. She's about three and a half. I have another one that's about four and a half. Number eight, we have Pamphobedius antonis. I struggled with this one because I absolutely love my panthos, and this is one of my favorite spiders. 
and I, this spider could really be anywhere in this entire list. But here's a picture of my girl that I just took this morning. She recently molted, and the black, that velvety black on her, again, I'm a sucker for that, is just stunning. Um, you can see here she's got two roaches in her mouth, and she's, you know, putting on some weight after her latest molt. And I just can't get over how sleek and beautiful she is. Mine has also got a fantastic temperament. I think she might have kicked hairs once when she was younger. She was actually, as a three-inch juvenile, very, very secretive and burrowed a lot. But since hitting about five or so inches, she's right out in the open. Very, very good showcase spider, and I see her all the time. Um, this is a species that is said to be moisture dependent, but I don't go nuts with the moisture and I do moisten the substrate every month or so, at least half of it, and I keep the water ball full, but I will say the last time she molted, it was rather dry in the enclosure with just a little bit of wetness underneath and she did fine. So beautiful species, large species, this girl's pushing about eight, eight and a half inches or so, and one that gets a lot of notice in the hobby because of its beauty and size. At number seven, we have Carabina Versicolor. This was actually, I believe, my fifth tee, and I bought her as a sling back when I was just kind of getting into the hobby again. And I'll tell you, she freaked me out at first, only because I had read all these horrible things about how difficult they are to keep. Luckily, I got some very good advice from a keeper who told me, don't bother spraying them all the time, don't bother keeping them on wet substrate, but just make sure that they have a water dish handy dribble some water on the web and they'll be fine and his advice was fantastic because my little girl's obviously all grown up now into this beautiful gem of a tarantula just easily one of the most beautiful species I keep her temperament is pretty good I know some people have very docile ones um, this one I don't know if I'd try handling her I'm not big into handling to begin with but uh, she just gets very very nervous and keep in mind avicularia do have urticating hairs they have a different type where they basically spread it through direct contact so if she rubs her little abdomen on you that's not her going hey I love you so much it's her basically trying to hair you but you can see right here she is beautiful eats great I have her in a glorious uh, enclosure that one of the custom made ones I had and she just looks so beautiful in it but keep in mind they will web up the enclosures quite a bit which can make them difficult to see at times but most of the time I can catch her out and about, which is great because she's a gorgeous spider. So somebody looking for a showcase spider, if you set them up correctly, you should see them more often than not. But here we go. I'm trying to get in here with all the webbing, as you can see, and get a good shot of her. But just an amazing looking animal, and there's just nothing like them in the hobby. Number six, we have Nandu chromatis. I've been obsessed with this species since I first got into the hobby. And years ago, I actually ordered what was going to be a six and a half inch freshly molted female. Unfortunately, the person who mailed her to me sent her in 20 degree temperatures. It, we ended up getting a snap uh, cold flash and did not put heat packs in. So I got a box of dead spiders. But a couple of years ago, I finally got a replacement, a little um, large sling juvenile. And you can see her here. She's all grown up, ready to molt. You can see that big bulbous beauty uh, booty there is nice and black. And she's probably going to molt very, very soon. But just, uh, I love the look of this species from those like bone-colored carapace to the stripes on the leg to the red abdomen. I think the artist in me it just loves all the different colorations and patterns they got. It just works so well together and makes it one of the most striking tees I have. Mine is out quite a bit, although she will still retreat to her burrow when disturbed. But as you can see from these videos, I didn't have too difficult a time catching her out and about. And so this would make a good showcase spider, I think, especially once she puts on a little more size. Right now, she's probably around four and a half inches or, low, or so, five inches, but I'll get a good measurement on her molt when she molts next. But amazing species, very, very beautiful. And one thing to know about them is the hairs are supposedly atrocious. I've never, knock on wood, had any issues yet with the hairs, but I've heard from people that have gotten haired by them that they could be some of the worst hairs in the hobby. So something to keep in mind. But Oh, just amazing. Love the coloration of them. Just truly something like, a lot of times I take her out and feed her and just stare at her for a bit, just admiring her beauty.
And number five, this one was tough. I have Euathlis Species Red. I love these little guys. I think they're gorgeous. I used to be a huge arachnophobe, and this was actually one of the first species I ever handled, and it was just an amazing experience. And again, I know I'm not, I'm not very into handling now, but it was something that was huge for me to actually have this large hairy spider in my hand and not be freaking out. Um, I love the looks of these guys. That little patch of red in the abdomen is fantastic. The only issue I've had with them, and unfortunately, I think this is due to the fact now that I realized that when I purchased my females who were likely wild caught, is that they do fast quite a bit. And sometimes they fast at un inopportune times. So for example, my female here molted a couple years ago, right around October, November, and she came out of the molt quite thin and then went into a fast. So she didn't eat and bulk back up. And it was getting a bit nerve wracking because I didn't want the spider to starve and she was looking very small. But she molted recently and she's been eating again, which is great. But just one of the coolest tarantulas available. And for people that are asking what a good beginner species is, one of my top favorites, if just for the inquisitiveness and their tractability. Uh, again, the only downfall would be they start off very, very teeny tiny slings, take a while to grow, and they can fast. Although it sounds like the captive raised ones don't have this issue as much. As a matter of fact, a hobbyist friend of mine, Brandy, just had her male bolt out and to a mature male, and it took it less than a year or just over a year. So really cool species. Number four, we got one that I picked up a little more recently, Salmapius cambrigi, or cambrigi, I've heard it pronounced both ways, I'm sure somebody will correct me. Uh, these guys have grown on me in a huge way, and, and I can honestly point to this species in particular for kicking off my obsession with arboreals. For a while, I was obviously into Pisolotheria species, and didn't really branch out much further than that, with the exception of a couple of Vicularia. However, after picking up this girl here that I got as a freebie when I placed an order, I just immediately fell in love with her. I just love the looks out of them, and I have a couple more um, Salmapia species right now, but this she's probably my favorite. Just big, beefy girl, gorgeous colors. I'm so sorry I couldn't get them to come out better in this video. I was actually trying to get her to come out and about, but she's got a little bit of an attitude, a little sassy girl, where I was trying to move some of the leaves behind her to get her to come out in the open, and she kind of turned around to confront the leaves. So something to think about. This is a New World species, but they will bite if provoked, and they are very, very quick. And supposedly the venom is a little bit more potent than your normal New World species. That said, they're gorgeous. My girl is actually very well behaved. She's out all the time, which makes her a beautiful showcase spider. And she's, you know, kind of grabbed a place in my heart as one of my all-time favorite species right now. So, sorry I couldn't get a better shot, but there she is, my P. Cambridge eye. Number three is the Hobby Classic. Once Brachypelma smithy, now Brachypelma hemeri. I absolutely adore this spider. I adore this species. When I think of tarantulas, this is what immediately comes to mind. And part of that's because I grew up in a time period where when you saw a spider on TV or tarantula, it was usually one of these guys. Uh, first tarantula I ever saw in person was at a pet store, and it was a hammeri, and I was obsessed with it. Despite being scared of spiders, I always had a respect for them and was fascinated by them. So one of the first things I did when I got back into the hobby seriously is track down a female. I got this girl from Jamie's Tarantulas, I think four years ago now, and just in awe of her still. Just beautiful, beautiful spider. Love those markings, the contrast between the black and the fiery knees. Just uh, one of my favorite all-time species and one that I would always have in my collection. I was just talking to a buddy of mine in the hobby, Jesse, and we were talking about how a lot of people new to the hobby say there aren't any beginner species that are very pretty or striking. We totally disagree. This girl is one of the most striking ones you can find out there. So as you can see, she's very, very calm. They are a bit more skittish when they're smaller. And I've had people get juveniles and say this thing's crazy. They do calm down. Usually as adults, they are known to flick hairs at times. Mine's actually a sweetheart. She sits there, she doesn't flick hairs, and she just looks pretty. So there you go, Brachypelma hammeri.
Number two, if I'm being honest, this one was almost number one, Theraphosa sturmi. Absolutely love this species. Just, I'm in awe of their size. And I know people will say, ah, I don't have anything to do with them. They're too difficult to raise. Bull, they're not really that difficult to raise. They're not as fragile as they're made out to be. I got my first Sturmi a few years ago, Sturmi a few years ago, and it was a large uh, adult male specimen that molted two more times in my care. Fell in love with them then, and then I picked up two slings and raised those two slings to adulthood. The male just matured out, and my female is now pushing about nine inches. You can see her here. Great eaters, ridiculously fast growth, and you honestly can't appreciate the size until you see one in person. They're just massive spiders. I've heard people mention Lasiodora or Formictopus or Pamphibedia species about how big they get, and like, yeah, they're just about the same size as a Sturmy. No, it's not a comparison. They're just so much thicker. And again, love those species as well, but this is the queen as far as the big-bodied spiders. And just amazing. You'll see in a minute, I'm going to feed them. Great feeding attitude are just amazing eaters and I feed this one sometimes two, three, four doobia roaches, takes them down, no problem. Uh, one of the things that they do have against them as a knock is that they can be very flighty. Some people say there's a defensive. Uh, they kick a lot of hairs. I've been incredibly fortunate in that mine are not big hair kickers at all. I've never been haired by one and I've never had a threat pose. My male, my original mature male, was a bit more flighty and would kind of sprint around his enclosure a bit when he got disturbed, but these two have been very, very calm. Just an amazing animal, and one of the few that still gives me that sense of awe that I used to get when I would see a big, giant, hairy spider. All right, now it's time for the runners up before we get to the number one. And I got to be honest, any of these guys should probably be in the top 10. And I'm already second guessing myself. I turned to Billy a minute ago and I'm like, I, I don't even know if I agree with this list anymore. First off, we got Nandrew Trepepi. She should probably be in the top three. I, I ran out of spots and I went back and forth, wishy-washy over it. I love this girl. The coloration of her is just fantastic. She's so fluffy and one of the few spiders I have that honestly I want to hug. She just looks like a little stuffed animal and she's so inquisitive. When I open the enclosure, she usually comes out and kind of looks at me like, hey, are we going to get fed? Just an amazing species. So can we just call her like 3.5 or 2.5 because she really should be up there. I don't know what I was thinking here. Next up is Formictopus cancer, uh, cancerides. Again, I, I went back and forth where this one should be placed. I picked a different one for number one, but it could have easily been this girl because they got me into the Formictopus. I love them. Look at the coloration with the purples, the bronzes. Uh, they're great eaters. They tackle prey from across the enclosure. Just, they grow quickly. Just an amazing spider. And one of my favorite of the quote-unquote beginner species, the Gramostola pulchropes. I absolutely love the looks of these. I have four of them, and the plan was to sell the ones that, after I got a female, the extras, and I just held on to them. I love them. I've raised three now up from slings. I had this one here I got as a juvenile. It's a male, and he's doing great. I love those golden stripes on their knees. It's just so striking, and their behavior is fantastic. Very low-key, laid-back, just gorgeous, cool spider. And the Lasiodora Itabune, uh, I don't know what the, oh my God, I don't know what I was thinking. This one should have been up in the top 10 too. Um, all right, can I redo my list? Is it too late? Because I've got spiders here that should be up in the top 10 that aren't. I love this. This is one of my favorite all-time spiders. You know what? These lists suck. <laughs> I'm having such a hard time picking what my top 10 would be. Next time I do this, I'm just going to have to do top 50 and try to include everybody, but an amazing spider, one of my favorite species, awesome Lasiodora species, beautiful coloration, quick growth, the whole nine. Now we have number one. I wavered back and forth on this one so much, but finally came down to, it was going to be for Mictopus, but which species would I pick? It was going to be Cancerides, but I went with Formictopus species green femur. Unfortunately, my girl's green femurs were not coming out in the pictures and in the video. Hopefully, you'll see a little bit in the video, but I adore the species. I think it's one of the most striking tarantulas I own. They have the reddish hairs on the abdomen. That gold carapace is stunning, and unfortunately, what's going to come out just a little bit here is the green 
on the femurs. It's just breathtaking when you see it lit up with the green on the femurs, the gold carapace. It's almost like a Christmas spider because it has all the colors you'd associate with Christmas. And hey, who doesn't love Christmas? But this girl is one of my showcase spiders. I have her in an acrylic Jamie's enclosure. She's right out in the open. She's one I love looking at. And she sits right out in the open, very, very calm. I hear a lot of people complain about the Formictopus species being very high strung and bitey and lots of threat poses. Mine have been total sweethearts. And here I'm trying to zoom up on that knee so you can see some of the green femur. But unfortunately, it's not showing. Trust me, it's it's there and it's beautiful. But just one of my favorite species in probably, well, no, probably my favorite terrestrial uh, genus. Just love them so much. So you can see her here as I'm getting up. And I'm actually really close with this camera. No hair flicking, no biting. And after this, I dropped in some crickets and she... Grabbed them up pretty quick and daintily started to eat them. Beautiful girl. So for Myctopus species, green femur, but it could have been any for Myctopus species, honestly. Is it on? Yes. Okay, so that's my list. Again, I'm hoping other people will come in and chime in and let me know what your favorites are so we can kind of talk about them. This is the list for today. Honestly, I'm not feeling that good about it already, and I just compiled it less than an hour ago. So... Moving on, I'll probably end up doing one of these once a year or so to show how things change, or maybe I'll just do my top 50 favorite and just manage to fit everybody in there. So again, thanks so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please feel free to click up here and subscribe, or check out other videos here and here, or is it here and here? I don't know, here and here, here and here. They'll be somewhere in here. I will add them afterwards when I put this video up on YouTube. So once again, thanks for watching.